Buongiorno, my soccer universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wearing Bologna, who had the biggest uh, jump, and you know, Marco Anatovic around here is, of course, in the headlines, but this video will be mostly about the derby. Uh, which also is kind of fitting because I've read, I've blew in there, it was a draw. It was a weird derby in many ways. One that actually um, got me quite agitated at times. And I realized that this is the one game, despite Lusk having a no, no, numerous games, like this is the one game where I really, really, really get agitated. It's probably down to because Lusk doesn't really have a rival. The one thing of the Milan Derby, and to me, I say it right now, this is the derby of all derbies. Um, yes, they're more heated derbies, but it's the stage, it's the quality of the players on the pitch. It's the overall atmosphere that is, you know, poking fun at each other all the time, but it's not like this nasty atmosphere where you get, uh, you, uh, you have to be afraid that you will die uh, if you're in the wrong spot. So uh, it's just the whole, it's just grand. It's just grand, and then the TFOs are legendary. Uh, we'll talk about those too. Uh, so this is for me the takeaway. As I said, it was a weird derby. Just before I get into it all, I think the draw was a fair result. But it was also a derby of many, many gifts. Not all of which were fortunately accepted in certain ways but uh let's talk first about the other games you against fiorentina was a really um awkward game in many ways because i thought that fiorentina for uh, up until the 775th or so uh maybe a little bit sooner was largely the better team a team that really uh wanted to take the game to juve and juve uh did not know what hit them and juve just came off a really great performance against zenit and then it was kind of a little bit so and so and uh, fiorentina really gave it all to uh, give juve a hard time however then milenkovic is sent off and that changed the game and suddenly Juve uh, got the upper hand, Cuadrado came on, um, newly Caio Jorge also, also came, came on, but mostly uh, Cuadrado came, came on and he in the end scores the winner from a very, very acute angle and I think Fiorentina fans, you know, it's a, it, this is a, a match that matters a whole lot to Fiorentina fans, less so I think for Juve fans. Um, it matters in, 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 in a sense that Fiorentina still uh, is hard, it's hard, hard of them. Fiorentina fans will be really, really felt a little bit aggrieved that they didn't get anything out of this game and that you will score this goal. But on the other side, I mean, I look at that, there needs to be better. They need the goalkeeping uh, needs to be better. Uh, you cannot uh, concede a shot from that acute angle. But then again, it was a great uh, individual effort by Cuadrado giving Juve the win. Uh, Atalanta also getting a win at, I think, still last place, Cagliari. Cagliari again hitting a rough patch at the beginning. Let's see how they will recover. Last season they made, made many escape. Uh, Pajalic and Zapata scoring two goals. Joao Pedro had in the meantime equalized, but, you know, uh, just controlling it. Not much more. Uh, much more to talk about between Venezia and Roma. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect three to win for Venezia. And I think uh, Roma winning only one out of the last seven, seven games. The Mourinho effect has definitely worn off. And it went rather, rather quick. Already when they lost 6 1 at Bode, uh, Mourinho was not uh, happy and threw his players under, 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 under the bus. Now, you know. I still maintain that Mourinho was not the right signing for Roma. I have to give him credit. He tries to play uh, in a more offensive style, which the Roma did very well under Fonseca. I actually think that if Roma wouldn't have been ravaged with injuries last season, they would have finished much, much better than they did. Because uh, I really liked what Fonseca was doing with them. But it was seemingly not enough for the owners that needed to make a splash. And now we get Mourinho, which kind of galvanized the fan base for a little bit. But I am sure this is wearing off. I'm calling it right now. Get out of this Mourinho experiment as quickly as possible, hire a proper coach. The team seemed kind of, you know, saw highlights, read a little bit. It seemed very unbalanced in many ways, but also kudos to Venezia for, uh, giving, uh, for, for, for giving them a fine. Mattia Caldara, uh, Milan Loni, gives them the lead. Uh, then 
just before 4 and 47, 45 plus 2. Uh, Shaw Murodov and attempted to have Abraham put Roma in, in, in the lead. And then, uh, I mean, chances on both sides. Aramu with a penalty in Okareke. I think he played at Ulden in the last season. Uh, give uh, Venezia the win. And again, Venezia probably has an, is now my favorite stadium uh, this season anywhere in Europe because... I mean, I have been at that stadium. It's so ridiculously located. It's right at the edge of the main city in the lagoon. You see the boats and everything, and the um, and the lagoon in the background. There's this uh, uh, church, which uh, if you're there and have seen the other churches, man, it's not, it does it doesn't look that great, but it adds to the allure of the, of, of 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 that stadium. Uh, pretty special that the uh, players have have to arrive by boat. That's the fun stuff uh, about Venezia, and uh, I'm totally happy for Venezia up there. Um, speaking of Venezia, I mean, you see already up there the Veneto teams, all three have had pretty good results. I mean, Uden is Friuli, but it's also within the sphere of larger Venezia. As I said, I'm wearing Bologna, Marco Nautovic giving them the win uh, after um, uh, Sampdoria had just equal at 77-78 the two goals. Uh, so yeah, Arnautovic maybe uh, get something going for Bologna. Bologna also one of those teams that I, you know, here and there I would love to see them uh, make it into Europe. Of course, uh, we know the budget days, but there were better days for Bologna as well. Uh, a game that I did not see much. I mean, Udine beating Sassuolo is already a big result. Uh, Lazio against Sassuolo uh, is, is much, but you know, this was the game that I was expecting Lazio to win uh, the most because, you know, of course, that's the Lotito Derby. Lotito owns Lazio and he earns, owns, not earns, owns. Lazio and Salernitana, so I really expected Salernitana to roll over in that one. Yes, there's a golfing class, so I don't want to say anything, but I... Yeah. Those were always three points for Lazio. Um, Napoli against Verona. Verona again, Simeone scoring. Early on, uh, Dil Di Lorenzo then equalizing. Napoli having uh, chances to actually win the game. Two very late uh, red cards for Verona. Where I really thought that Napoli will do, do something. They hit the post, I think, through Ozeman. I think on a different day they would have won it. Um, but they didn't, which actually, actually took a little bit uh, the... Um, uh, you know the the pressure of Milan to needing to uh, to win in the derby if you want to stay um, with Napoli. Um, but yeah, Verona is a really, really, really good team this season. Again, despite a horrible start, so uh, we gotta watch out for for, for Verona to maybe make a, a run for the top six, seven, and play in Europe next season. They they really. Have taken points of big people, and I think uh, that Milan managed to beat Verona. That is one of those wins that could play div dividends late later on. Also, it needs to be mentioned. Um, Emporio Armani released um, Mar special Maradona shirts, which, to be honest, I mean, I got maybe the um, shirt with the Halloween as a special shirt. Now they I about to release three of these from Walder here. I like navy, I like light blue, but why do you then put Maradona's face in white with the fingerprint? I mean, it's a great, great idea, but this is perfect for a white shirt. And then charging 150 euro euros for that, it's a little bit too much. I will have fun with those in my Serie A jersey review, which will come somewhere in December. But I think Napoli, we, we, I, I probably need, need, need to make an own segment, uh, 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 a separate video just for Na Napoli with the rate that they are releasing jerseys at the moment. It's absolutely crazy. Milan Inter, first Tifos, Tifos, um, how to say, I totally understand why the Inter fans put out Campione uh, d'Italia out there with then uh, the Milan fan kind of as a, uh, uh, <laughs> what's, what's to say, a, 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 a buffoon <laughs> we want to have, and Inter, yeah, we have it. However, if you compare this Tifo to what the Milan fans then put out, and it's not always that the Milan fans show more class, but in this case, they completely outclassed it. Don't every yes, you might have win win a title, but we are thanking the medics who help us fight the corona pandemic. What a wonderful and it's a, and it's a two part for because first they have the um, uh, uh, the heartbeat up with saying grazie, and then they pull the uh, big tifo with the medics and saying yeah, we'll always we'll never forget and thanks for what you have done. 
<laughs> the one a little bit spiteful, the other one uh, being uh, grateful. Milan won that team for battle, they won for sure, 100%. Um, it seemed already a little bit uh, tight. First half of the derby. Uh, it is so weird to say, and I say it's a derby of the gifts. It was so weird to see because I think for the first 45 minutes, Milan showed that they're the better team. They played better, they had Brozovic completely under, under control. The only thing is they didn't produce chances, but they controlled the game. They showed that they're more mature and the better, uh, the, the more cohesive team. However, they completely imploded on two, uh, two or three occasions and it would not have been a freak incident if Inter goes into the half with a 3-1 lead. Totally weird. Uh, first penalty. I I don't get it. <laughs> no, I do get it. Uh, I do get it a little bit. But the fact is, Casey, yes, he has the ball. He has a few options to get rid of. He should not dribble towards his own goal and then get under pressure. But how can he, in possession, be the one who fouls Chalanoglu? It's first a foul of Chalanoglu. And then falling down, yes, the Chalanoglu leg goes in between Cassie's leg. And I'm not sure, you know, it's between the two of them who pushed what. It seemed to me a weird penalty choice. Absolutely weird penalty choice, uh, to be honest. And then Chalanoglu stepping up. Of course, I don't know why he's so upset. I mean, Milan gave him an offer. He, ref he refused it. And you're not worth more than what Milan. I mean, that Inter is, is, is paying you that much money. <laughs> I'm still happy that he went away, that he joined in Milan, I'm sorry, and then uh, he converts the penalty down, 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 down the middle, which already shows how, uh, you know, he wanted to be smart, but he also was not very, very sure, because you no know, Tata knows him. Uh, it was not a good penalty, with, with some luck he saves it. And yes, I'm always saying, celebrate against your former team, it's fine, don't I know Slat and did it. Don't do that and, and you know celebrate with your teammates. Honestly, um, I really like the response of the Milan fans saying, uh, "Courage is not converting a penalty against a former team in the tenth minute. Courage is saying in your wife when she has cheated on you, which is exactly what happened to him." So loved uh, loved that part. So I think the Milan fans got the better of him as well. Jalaloglu definitely wanted to show uh, Milan he had a monkey or. Uh, Chip on his shoulder, let's, let's put it that way. And yeah, um, he probably could have scored another one later on as well. Milan though answered, and I want to present the Oscar to Fikayo Tomori for the best goal, best non-goal celebration ever. Everyone thought Fikayo Tomori had scored it, until you saw the replay. Steven De Frey thought, yeah, I really like scoring under the cover north so much in front of my own fans that I don't care whether uh, who is the goalkeeper in there. Classic on goal. Wonderfully, fully done. I mean, this is a, a goal that I've seen the Fry score many, many times. 1-1. One, one. And at that point, again, the same uh, Milan, a little bit more of the ball, a little bit more mature, not making making chances. Inter launching for the counter act, but really, uh, Brozovic and Jacob, this link was not there. However, Milan again combusts. Uh, and Balotouré, the, the ball comes out to... Um, now, I don't know the name of the Inter player out there, but he was one of the better ones. Uh, Darmian. Uh, Balaturi completely loses uh, the sight of him, does, uh, is standing wrong, makes a last ditch tackle where he plays the ball. He plays the ball before he plays Darmian, but I understand this was a little bit more of a penalty. And then, uh, so second gift of Milan, one gift from Inter, but this time Tata Drashana says, no, it's not much. And while Martinez, the height of the penalty was not uh, that, that great, he takes the penalty really, really well. Um, and Tato Roshano, if he would not have dived and decided, he makes not only a wonderful, a great save, but he also keeps the ball. So, uh, absolute uh, classic there. So, and then uh, before they have, I think Martinez has another huge chance uh, to make it 2-1 uh, for Inter. As, as, as I said, uh, while I thought Milan was the overall better team, Inter had better chances and should have probably led at the half. Second half, it was really then the other way around. I thought Inter was the better team for about a half hour in the second half. Looked everything that Milan was in the first half. Now it was Inter, except that Inter didn't even give up any um, counter-attacks. 
uh, but they had chances through Charles Nogle and then especially Arturo Vidal who had come to come on. But uh, what you have to credit Pioli, he made the right changes. He brought Kalulu on, he brought Salamex, he brought especially Re- Rebic on. Uh, and then uh, Ben Benazir, I was not so crazy about the Pakayoko one, but it also seems to work. I mean, what he changed up did work well. And then the last 50 minutes, I, I, I was sitting in the 75th minute, I said, who I would be happy to get out with a draw. And from that moment on, Suddenly, when Benazer came, uh, the game switched, and then Milan was right on the front foot. Another great free kick by Slatan. Where is this come from? Andanovic was working there, then Salah makes with a huge chance, uh, not that huge, a, a nice shot where it gets goals, goals on the post, it comes out, and then Cassie needs to bury that one. I mean, Cassie had a horrible game, Tato Roshano, the hero of the derby. Uh, Cassie, yeah, uh, let's get the situation sorted. I'm even thinking. In January, I know Cassie is an important player, blah, blah, blah. We have Tonali, we have Ben uh, He's at the Africa when they ship him to United. They need any, 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 any defensive mid, get some money and get some replacement for him. And I think uh, everything will be fine. And it's hard to say because I love this player in the last two seasons, uh, but he's not up to snuff at the moment. And clearly the contract dispute is something. That's not in his favor. I really thought that Milan can win this derby late. As I said, from what I said, I think it's a fair draw. And one that kind of is convenient for all of them. Uh, in the, my expected standing is now really Napoli, Milan and Inter neck to neck, neck, uh, neck to neck. Uh, there's hardly anything says but it seems to be a three-way race at the moment in Serie A. Seven points distance between Milan and Inter is something that looks very comfortable to me. So that was it for me for for Cesarea. I want to point out that in the upcoming round, we uh, both, all three top teams have rather steep tasks. I mean, Milan has to go to Fiorentina, not an easy game. Inter is playing Napoli. Draw would be nice there as well. Uh, so that is pretty big. And then we have also the little matter of Lazio against Juve. So a pretty exciting round coming back. And I forgot to say, Genoa has a new coach, Shevchenko. First game against Roma, home game, uh, you know, Mourinho, Shevchenko, there was something at Chelsea. And then the next home game for January is against Milan. Uh, please, Sheva, I know we want you to have a successful career. Maybe you will become a Milan coach sometime, but those three points are ours. If Lazio can get three points, we can get three points. Any case, Sheva, forever. I love that man. In any case, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please add anything you want to say uh, below. In the comments, I always like to read those. Uh, Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.